Debbie's Crafty Hands. Welcome, everybody. Um, if you're new, thanks for joining. If you're old, welcome back. Well, today we're going to be playing with inks, my embroidery ring, some old sheeting, my clear stamps and blocks, and some beautiful embroidery thread. So, what we're going to do? I've experimented doing some stamping and these two images were done with my memento ink and I'm going to try now with my new pure palette pigment ink stamp pad in I think it's supposed to be grey shades but um, lost in translation it says glay shades well forgive them for that that's the problem we know what they mean there was a slight bleed on the bumblebee's wings here and it's been sitting here for about five or ten minutes so the memento is probably not the best to use for images that you're not going to embroider over. And this is the whole idea of this project today. If I want to do some leaps, maybe do this both and embroider them with my embroidery threads. So I'm going to try this same image here with the grey. And it says it's permanent ink on the description. So we shall see. Let's check it to make sure there's nothing over the outside of the block and let's place down. Now I've got a red card behind us today because I'm working with white and the white board wouldn't have really seen what was sheet and what was board very easily so I've got a bit of red card under us today. Now that gives a lot softer but if you're going to embroider it all you need is some, an image to follow so I shall leave that to one side for a minute. We'll come back to those hopefully. But the main event today, I wanted to do this bouquet. So I've got a nice big bit of cotton that will go into my embroidery rig. You can do it with smaller images. You just tuck, make sure you tuck some in and then hold it on and just pull it nice and tight on the edges that are in and then screw it in to hold it, pulling tight again. And then you have some stability. You don't have to have the whole ring or the whole fabric around the ring. And it's just to hold while you embroider and it, it stops the fabric puckering up a bit. So we'll come back to that later. I want to today concentrate on this image. It's daffodils in a bouquet not very clear here but hopefully it should look once it's stamped onto the fabric so i'm going to use the new one and i tend to try and remember to stamp onto the image rather than image onto the back because that way you're not so likely to get the ink all over the back of the um, stamp book so i'm just going to give it a good inking make sure i cover all areas right so just check it to make sure there's a little bit here on this corner. I'll wipe that away. I think everything else looks pretty okay. Well, it doesn't matter which way up you stamp your image because you can just twist the fabric. So I'm going to put it in the middle so I've got my embroidery ring. And I can always put my leaves as decorations around the outside to make like a wreath. I'm holding the image on to make sure that the ink has a chance to soak into the fabric. It's the best image we can get away with. So I'm going to lift it and when you lift it, don't move it from side to side, lift it directly up and then you shouldn't get a smudged edge. Now, that hasn't given me the image I was hoping for because it's got either not much in the middle or I didn't press it down enough. So that's not a problem because I can use the other side. So I need something maybe a bit softer underneath my mat to squidge into. So we're going to try again. Couldn't find my squidgy mat, but I have found my barrel. So this will help give me even pressure. So I'm going to ink up again. And the other this it's a new one. I've never used it before. So sometimes the image doesn't always come out first time. So I'm giving it plenty of ink all the way around. Now normally I would probably use a stamp holder to uh, put this image on if it was on paper but i'm not sure how to translate that stamping on fabric right so i'm going to turn it place it down nice and squarely and i'm going to use my baron now my baron allows me to get firm pressure 
I will look around on my image and I'm pushing very hard in the middle just so that hopefully I'll get the image in the middle much better. I can work with that. So the secret is to use the battery. So I need to put this in my embroidery ring and then have an image to work with. For the embroiderers amongst you, this is a good way to use up your or use your rubber stamps and give yourself an Im a pattern to embroider. Disclaimer, I am not good with the needle thread where it comes to embroidery, but I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to have some fun with it. So, my first bit I want to do is the ribbon here. I'm only going to do stitches I know, I'm not going to try and do anything too fancy. And I'm going to separate my threads, so I would like a three thread. But these embroidery threads are six strands, so if you separate it, it's halving it and haven't got so much bulk, one for your needle and two for your, your design. I mean, you can use all six, not a problem. So most people do split the threads there. So I have one, two, three threads and a decent length of my embroidery floss. A trim. I'm hoping to go through the needle I've chosen. If not, I'll just get a different needle out. But I was hoping to have a thinnish needle or we can use my needle thread. That might be slightly quicker. Stop you hanging around waiting for me to try and thread the needle. So with the needle threader, put the thread a bit through the eye of the needle. Then you put your thread through the thread a bit, going the opposite way, and then you put the thread through the eye. And because my thread was quite stiff, I just broke my needle threader, but it was one of these cheapy ones anyway, so that's not a problem, I have plenty of those ones. They, they come in the sewing kits, really cheap ones. They don't break normally when you have like normal cotton thread. It's just because I'm using a thicker thread. To come this side, that's it. Now, I think, now I'm not going to double up my thread because obviously I've got three strands already so I don't need to make it any thicker. But I will try and put it in the end so it doesn't pull right through. Probably do two knots actually just to make sure since so there's no loop to connect onto. Now coming up through the back of the embroidery circle, I need to work out what is ribbon and what is actually the stem of the flower. So that's ribbon. So I need to just do a little chain stitch. So with a chain stitch, you come up and you you have the thread like in a loop and you go down come up and then you wind it through. Wind it round. That, that's just giving me whip stitch. Okay. Well we'll do the stitch for the moment. I'll have to practice other stitches I think and we'll come back to some more embroidery once I've had a practice. So I'm literally just following my line from the ink, going in and out and just doing a running stitch. If you're gonna go back then go a little bit from the Oh, you went before, otherwise you'll just pop it back out again. So you want to go part way past the hole you just made so that you're not coming up through the same hole. And I'll just get up to this point and then I'll uh, do a different colour. A good watching the TV project, you know, you can come backwards and forwards with it. Have it to one side, put it down, try a different colour, get bored with that colour, start another colour. And I probably won't finish this on the video because it's quite ornate pattern but I want to show you you can use the big ones as well so I'm going to come back down and follow it down alongside because that's where the the ribbon thread went and I've used quite a close weave um, cotton here so I believe it was an old bed sheet now that was just an example just now where I came up in the same hole and undid my own uh, and then we're going to follow this line here down. Now these pieces can be trimmed around, sewed around so they don't fray. You can blanket stitch around the edges, tuck the edges, however like you like to finish it. They make lovely gifts because they show you know, there's a lot of care and attention gone into it. So maybe you've got a friend that's got lots of stamps, you do embroidery. Just 
turn it round and stamp a bit of fabric, and then you've got a pattern to follow. You can make your own colours up as you go along, you don't have to follow what everybody else says it's got to be. So here we have the correct side, and then on the other side, we've got all our untidy stitching. And I'm going to finish off here and do my loops. You could just line it, another bit of fabric over the top, maybe as a slightly heavier bit of fabric so you couldn't see the cloth through it. Let's see, maybe I want to do it around the outside of the staff a little. Right, yeah, that. One, two, three, split that down. You don't want to have too much thread to work, you can always replenish it. And then we'll put the, the threader through the eye of the needle and then gently pull it through. Okay, so we're going to go daffodils this time. I'm going to do this bit here. So I'm just literally going to that. So great long stitch here because we'll do like a, a filling in stitch now rather than lining stitch. Move along a little bit and come up and go back down to the side and vary the lengths according to the image you've got. So this is the trumpet of the flower that sticks out the top between the petals. And that's usually darker colour. You could do daffodils if you wanted to. You don't have to stick to the natural colours. Make it your own, do you? This bit goes a little bit faster because you're doing bigger stitches. You can go up and down and then back up the side that you've just gone up. It would waste a lot of cotton and I have been doing that a little bit as you can see where it's doubled over here. It depends. If you've got lots of cotton it doesn't matter. If you want a slightly thicker image then that's the way to go. So just check the back every so often because you can get tangled without realising and you can feel sometimes with your fingers that are underneath holding the, the embroidery ring as well. You've got a lot more embroidery done. If you're a little unsure about your image and what bit is what, if you stamp it on a bit of card and have it as your point of reference and maybe use pencil to colour in that image on the paper and then you've got a colour to follow particularly if you want to do more than one for whatever reason maybe you want to do them and sell them you know and maybe write the number of the threads because a lot of threads will have numbers and that will be the shape number so you could write that over the top of the colour that you've coloured in to say what colour thread you've used and that would be a, a reference that you could follow Right, so I've come to the end of my trumpet and again I'm going to sign off. I want a little purple on this because I think these are supposed to be the purple flowers that are little bobbly ones. What colour purple do I want? The deeper one, the lighter one, I think I want the lighter one. Now this next stitch might be called a French knot. Right, hold on to this bit here, pull it through so it doesn't off the bottom and give it a little twiggle, little wiggle wiggle. Right, I'm going to go for this one here. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to put my needle up and down. And then when I come back up again, I want my needle up here. So I need this to be wound round as many times as you like. And then what you do is you come up and you put your needle through the loop and you wind it round several times. And then start that again. So start it again. Just need to cut my knot off and pull it through. Started. Let's go again. There we come up. Have our thread. We wind our thread around the needle six times and then you go down a little bit further than where you were, keeping it low onto the point of the needle and then pulling it all through. And your cotton will then loop over the bits that you wound around and make a little knot. And it just gives a bit of texture to your stuff. And just work down until you finish the flower. Doesn't matter which way, you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise, depends on your preference. And all those windy bits around the needle form the little bobble. Now we're going to go up to the knot. It doesn't matter if there's a fabric left, uh, the cotton left at the back here, because that won't be seen. But say pulling it through again, it's going to lose that bit. What you've got to be careful of is you don't split your thread. That might have been what happened. Going back through, not going through any thread. And I've gone through the loop here, which means then I can next stitch I can hold that down. Going down to where you should be either one. And I'm going to go back through. Very careful not to split the 
wool of my wool, wool my embroidery touch. And with lovely. Over one more time. I'm running out of thread. There we go. Quite low down, otherwise it gets stuck. Hold it all out of the way. Go back down. Now my <laughs> thread has really decided to separate itself. So I'm going to cut it lower where it's all joined up together. Re-thread very quickly. So I've used this needle threader now about four or five times and it works just holding the base there so that's a good little tip. And I think I've got more bobble on the back than I've got on the front. Right? It kept on tangling up on me but that's probably because I'm trying to concentrate on this and talk and where I am and the, I probably had it completely out of camera. That's how I rolled. Oh, hello, little. Where are you going? Going up there? That you cop? Okay, maybe you can. Yeah, now you get yourself stuck, haven't you? Okay. She's sitting behind the camera. So, we've got a bit of daffodil, a bit of whatever this flower's called, purple one, and a bit of ribbon. So, should we try some leaves? Or some stems next. So I'm going to do this green here. So what colour are the leaves? So this colourish. Whatever colour you want them to be. They could be purple leaves if you wanted them to be. What I'm going to try this time is going to cut up a length and then I'll twist it all in one length rather than on the ski. I think that might be the easier route to separating these. Maybe not get so tangled then. Yeah, that's a bit easier, and it's not all tangled up on the end of the scheme then, so. Okay, that's a needle and threader. Hello. Oh, are we going to settle down there again? That's fine. Starting to start eating all my floss. Oh, no. <laughs> Chase a bit instead. Okay. Oh, you're a tinker, aren't you? Yeah. You just pulled it out of my needle threader. Missy. Let's try that one more time, shall we? Now I can't see what I'm supposed to be embroidering. No. Teat. You are a day. Goodness me. I'm trying to eat my floss. It's not candy floss. It's embroidery floss. Give me a nut at the end. I do believe we were going for this. This one here. Sometimes it's a bit trial and error as to where your needle is going to suddenly decide to pop up. Try not to pull it too tight because you don't want your fabric to pucker. I suppose you could always do this on a nice white handkerchief as well, couldn't you? You could stamp lettering or wording and just embroider the wording. As many stamps as there are in the world, cling stamps or whatever, you, you know, just experiment, have a play. If they don't work, what have you lost? A little bit of time and a couple of bits of thread. And as long as you've been doing it, that was a good thing. And you might find that uh, it actually worked out quite nicely. I mean, if you're artistic, you can probably draw your own pictures on your, your cotton or whatever. Me not being very good at drawing, I thought, well, how am I going to get a picture on here? You can embroider. And then I thought, oh, I don't know if I use my stamps. Are you going to settle down now? I want you to grab in my needle because it's very sharp. Now, if you want to, what you could also do is do a running stitch. We might do that actually, do a running stitch of a different shade going down the middle just to define the vine, the, the vein, not the vine, the vein. You just want to be the star of the show, aren't, don't you? Is it this crafty hands? Not Debbie's crafty hands anymore. You've taken up the show, have you? I know, little P had his own episode. You want your own episode, do you? Is that what it is? Trying not to poke her in the ear holes with the needle as I'm doing it. Try and get that fine balance of not going through this 
hole, but at the same time being close enough so you haven't got a gap. So where you've got a join in the leaf, you give yourself a separation point, I suppose. It's pretty repetitive really, I suppose. Just working your way around the image, choosing which bit you want to do next. Oh, lovely people. Hopefully I'll have this finished soon and uh, it's been fun. So this is the finished article. Um, there will be a time lapse bonus video um, giving you <laughs> stitch by stitch um, and it is recorded at 1400 times the speed. It did actually take me nearly six hours to complete um, so obviously we couldn't fit that all in the one video so we've um, also on that time-lapse video will be some housekeeping so pop over there and you'll find out uh, some future projects and times etc um, so the 50th anniversary will be on the 3rd of not anniversary, what am I talking about? That's because I'm thinking of my mum and dad's 60th anniversary just recently. Um, the 50th episode will be on the 3rd of May and um, we're going to think up something good um, to celebrate. Um, this journey since January has been fun and we're learning all the time. So hopefully going forward, you'll see improvements in the editing and the crafting and the presentation, etc., etc. So look forward to uh, progressing and learning alongside you guys. Um, the embroidery itself can be used for card front for applique on an outfit maybe um, or you could just appreciate it and frame it um, lots of options um, if you can think of other options that would be great put them in the comments and I might be able to do it this particular one I think I'm going to be framing um, as it's my first embroidery piece for a very long time um, I did do a piece when I was about 16 for an ex-boyfriend of mine and sewed it to the back of his jacket and recently I found out that he still has the embroidery and the jacket so it does stand the test of time and that's about 40, 40 years ago. Okay. Oh, Stephen. Uh, yes, so uh, yeah, so they, they do last, and um, even if I framed it, if I found something appropriate that I could then sew it onto, then I can always take it out of frame, because the frame will preserve it. So, enough of me waffling. I will see you on the um, time lapse, and in the future, much love, and bye-bye for now. <laughs>